<laughs> just tell me what we're going to do. Just tell me what we're going to do. Okay, so gonna... we're going to go and check out some little churches on the uh, west side of Maui. Yeah. Cindy and I visited three churches that day, beginning with the Door of Faith. And except for the Door of Faith, which was built in the 1940s, the other churches were established in the early 1800s. And knowing that there are hundreds of little mission churches on Maui and throughout the islands, I decided I wanted to find out more about the Hawaiian belief system before the missionaries came and then what happened after they came. So come along with me on that journey. The belief systems and daily prayer practices in the islands arrived with the Polynesian voyagers. Family and oneness with all things were central to Hawaiian life. The people were in tune with nature, plants, trees, animals, the land, and each other. They respected all things and took care of all things. There was a pantheon of four primary gods and hundreds of gods and goddesses and protective spirits. In fact, each family had their own guardian or two. In 1810, King Kamehameha the Great successfully united all the Hawaiian islands into one kingdom for the very first time, aided by English weaponry. The English explorer James Cook had arrived in the islands 30 years before, and awed by the English ships and power, the Hawaiian royalty quickly adopted their manner of dress and became interested in the English system of governance and culture. Thus it was, the Christian missionaries were invited to come to the islands to teach the Hawaiian people about Christianity. The invitation was likely suggested by Queen Ka'anhumanu, King Kamehameha's favorite wife, who was on fire to modernize Hawaii. Unfortunately, the great king died while the missionaries were en route from Boston. Shortly after his death, Queen Ka'ahumanu, in an effort to solidify her power, convinced his successor, young King Kamehameha II, to break the traditional kapu system which governed Hawaiian beliefs and daily life. The first missionaries arrived on the big island of Hawaii in 1820. These seven missionary couples were filled with purpose and religious zeal determined to bring Christianity to the polytheistic and animistic Hawaiians. The kapu system of governance having been broken opened the people up to readily embrace the new Christian cosmology and morality. Soon, there was a huge wave of missionaries from New England bringing their Bibles, hymnals, beliefs, and customs to Hawaii. People loved Queen Ka'ahumanu, but the whalers that swarmed the waterfront in Lahaina town did not. Soon after her baptism, in 1825, she outlawed prostitution and drinking. A little while later, encouraged by the Protestant missionaries, the queen banned tr the traditional chants, the hula, kahuna healers, and ultimately teaching the Hawaiian language was outlawed in schools. Thankfully, there was a cultural resurgence in the 1970s which was ignited by musicians who composed songs in Hawaiian that became very popular. The ban on the Hawaiian language was lifted in the 80s, and today there are 25 Hawaiian immersion schools. I was really struck when Cindy and I visited Waiola Congregational Church in Lahaina Town and found that it was established in 1823 just three short years after the initial missionaries had arrived in Kailua Kona. Cindy and I then visited Sweet Lahui Kalani Ka'anapali Congregation Church, built in 1840 near the city center of Lahaina. Now interested in learning and seeing more, I continued my search for other mission churches on my own.
Ka'ahumanu Church in Wailuku was established in 1830. The story goes that Queen Ka'ahumanu came here for a church service in the mid-1830s, loved the location, and asked the pastor to build a more substantial church and name it in her honor. The church that you see here was built in the 1880s. New England architecture was characteristic of these early mission churches since the missionaries came from there. The missionaries contributed greatly to the Hawaiian people. Some created the first Hawaiian alphabet and written language. Soon thereafter, worshipers could have Bibles and hymnals in their own language. Tragically, the sons of many missionaries became the plantation owners and land barons of the islands. Their descendants own and control most of the land here in Hawaii today. Maria Lanakila Catholic Church was established in 1846. It's remarkable because Protestant ministers had convinced Queen Kahomanu to outlaw Catholics in the islands for a period of time. Justin and I used to attend Mass here. We loved being bathed in the ethereal music and harmonies of the remarkable Hawaiian choir. I mentioned sitting on the rock wall in front of this church with my friend Bill Haywood in my book when I was feeling lost after Justin's death. The Holy Rosalie Church in Paia was built in 1886 and is famous for its architecture and the Father Damien Memorial. Father Damien was a sacred heart priest who ministered to the leper colony in Molokai, ultimately succumbing to that disease. Holy Ghost Catholic Church was built in 1894 by Portuguese residents and their priest. Some Portuguese sailors jumped ship after tasting the tropical fruits and pleasures of the Hawaiian Islands, so they were early settlers here. This church is remarkable due to its unique octagon architecture. Lahaina United Methodist Church, built in 1896. What I like about this church is that it was designed in plantation style, similar to plantation housing of that era, as opposed to most of the earlier churches, which look like they're right out of a New England Christmas card or a European village. Speaking of plantations, Makawao Union Church was first established in the early 1860s to serve the plantation families. This church was complete, completed and dedicated in 1917, commissioned by the family of Sugar Baron Henry Baldwin. Well, I hope you enjoyed your little tour of Maui Mission Churches. There are hundreds more for the curious and adventuresome. And until then, this is Bonnie Meyer, Divine Conversations. Aloha, Nui Loa. See you next time.